Hello, pirates. Our friends of Pirate Chain. Me, Giuliano. It's July 15th. Hey, July 16th now, moving into the wee, 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 wee hours of the morning of July 16th in the UTC time. This is a global movement. One Earth rotating on its axis. Yes. That's one model. There are many other models, but let's just stick with that one. And in this model, we sit on this ship, sailing the seas of the Earth, adventuring, journeying this crypto ocean. We're going to take a look at some pirate chain price charts. Uh, let's do that. Let us do that using the get Orox terminal. That's right. Look what we have here. Now, you know, it's been it's been some time we haven't really we haven't really conferred about this R price action. And to be fair, the Coinex charts are really not keeping up with the the KuCoin valuations and uh, I'm not going to go into why, but really it's nice to be able to use the KuCoin price charts on Get Orox. It won't give us the full history of Pirate Chain price action, but at least now going forward, we can use these for more shorter term ideas. And also, yeah, it's just uh, something next thing to be excited about. So exciting, not exciting. Let us see here. What are we doing here in this Bitcoin action? Well, we're teetering on a down move, really. We are teeter oops, teetering on this down move. I say this because, okay, this is a four hour price chart, okay? One point is that oh, now we are Ichimoku lagging span below, below the, uh, the price. The price is below the cloud. The price has just been rejected by the 20 period average. The price is near the bottom ends of the Bollinger Bands. We haven't yet had this type of impulsive move in the price from the lower end of the Bollinger Band. We've only, well, we did over here a little bit as a continuation. Um, so yeah, all things considered, we are fitting to go a bit lower because as we also consider as we also consider what's happening with with MACD we see that actually we could be hitting some some positive some positive uh, momentum now all right so looking to hit that positive momentum can hold us off for a little bit how long not quite sure uh, RSI really doesn't give us one direction or the other. So if we start then saying, okay, fine, this is a four hour chart. We are potentially in the realm of moving further down. It would also serve this shape being a bit more of an ABC zigzag with an, a one to one type of ratio, as well as just playing into the lower levels, if we're talking even if it's just a wick, right? So if we go back in history and we start coming into these levels here again and uh, starting to move into the 30,000, even into the high to the $29,000 levels just for, even if it's for wicking purposes. So that's what might happen. And that that's just for consideration also with the, the R price okay, against USDT. Also, that could be uh, helpful for the R price against BTC. Um, yeah, so let's see then. If we were to take this into a daily and we were to look at it. Okay, we see that actually, yeah, this is a cause of concern because on this daily chart, all right, on this daily chart, we're starting to see, yes, we are at the lower end of the Bollinger Band. We've been rejecting it. 
uh, the 20 period average, one, two, three times here significantly. And then, yeah, we haven't quite yet had that impulse down. So there is clearly room not only for wicks down to the, to the 20 thousands, but also for, um, there, there's also room for, for candle bodies down into the 20 thousands. So let's see what happens. I'm not calling for that per se. I don't know what exactly will happen. And we know that all possibilities are possible, but probabilistically, uh, I, it's, it's just, it gives you that sense here. We're looking for uh, some further negative momentum, but maybe it'll be just small negative momentum on this daily. And we can start to build a bit more of that positive, uh, positive strength in the momentum, but uh, might need to clear out a little bit before, you know, getting in there maybe into the August period. So let's, yeah, because it's, it's just, it's just gonna grind, it's gonna grind. Not only is it going to grind, it can only grind for so long before it capitulates further. And it's looking like uh, soon is the time frame for further capitulation uh, on the daily price chart. Because you know, when we started looking at that weekly price chart, now I'm not saying there's going to guarantee be capitulation. Capitulation we might go up and, and test this 33k level for the uh, 20 period average here on the Bollinger Band, but. Weakness is the signal for now, and when we, oops, when we take it out into that weekly time frame, okay, uh, that price here on the lagging span of the Ichimoku uh, indicator, okay, is moving very closely, and we're getting into confusing times. And who's to say really that we're not going to break through here? I mean, this this. If there are deflationary pressures for asset price deflation, uh, if the cryptos and Bitcoin could fall into that as well. And it could just be a numbers game, right? Uh, in that sense. And we've seen this in other in other assets, um, in other, you know, we've seen it in fire chain. Uh, but the idea here is the soon. So if it's a soon thing, then it could, it could make its way and then come back up. Uh, it doesn't have to go all the way down here to the 25, but you know, the, the 26, 27, 25 area is that zone. And so, and then it could, it could quickly climb back up. And who's to say it doesn't have to, it could, it could, it could fight with the cloud. And, and if it, if it has enough momentum to get back up above it and, and work with it, that's fine. And even though the lagging indicator could be within the price, it just traverses for another little while. And as this price builds up and works its way into the later half of 20, 21 and into the beginning half of 2022 it has some some room to to begin growing we're starting to see a massive degree look at the degree of correction here a 50 percent correction a or 60 percent correction keeps us at at thirty thousand dollars so that is that is a, a huge degree of movement um, these these moves are are just massive scale it's crazy okay so that's the btc and just generally on the weekly we are closing the negative momentum gap and making it relatively more positive and as that happens uh, that means that the since it's a lagging indicator that means that we could be uh, gaining you know back some ground but for now it's looking like we want to we want to test something here uh, down lower it, it it just feels like because things feel seem as though uh, it's in the darkest of times right now in in the in the, the retail side of things, institutional side of things, uh, regulatory t stuff like the regulation, it's the lack of clarity is a huge effect on uh, prices uh, because of the decisions of uh, actors like institutional players and uh, even. Uh, well, yeah, mainly <laughs> because at the end of the day, right now, it seems like retail is out of the game uh, and it, it really is. It's the, the bigger money, which has the choice to either prop up the, the market or uh, let it roll over. And I imagine that uh, they are completely willing to let it roll over. But how rolled over can it get? We are going to see. We're going to see. Let, let us find out if it is a prolonged uh, 
a correction and we start to see that kind of movement, then that's possible. I mean, this is a long time. We're into 2023 and we're still at you know, 40,000. I don't think that that's going to happen. It doesn't feel right. But a move, a move down and whatever, whether it goes here or whether the move down brings us back up and we trend maybe into it and then finally out in 2022 that would be uh, highly reasonable for sure okay so what does that mean in terms of uh what does that mean and that's a scenario where you have a, a asset price deflation based on usd strength based on you know all these macro factors and other uh, situational contextual stuff right so you have that asset price deflation possibility which has it can be uh, mutually exclusive from um, from price inflation. You could have price inflation at the same time. Crazy. Uh, some strange kinds of stagflation. Anyway, I can't believe that this video, we're still on Bitcoin and we're talking about this, but I guess that's the kind of the picture we're at. And uh, you know what? Enjoy it for the weekend. It's a, a long journey here on this ship. So sometimes we need some stories to keep us uh, entertained, right? And educated. Because it's onward and upward. We're not just uh, calling it uh, quits or anything like that, right? We're just, we're, we're in, we're paying attention. That's, that's the beauty. That's the idea. All right. So where were we? We're, we're saying uh, that's about it for Bitcoin or whatever. We'll see what happens, right? That's, that's one option. Uh, the other option, of course, would be just a renewal of the inflationary pressures on everything, prices, but especially assets. And uh, that would that would bring that that next level uh, higher okay and then we'd be talking about these kinds of levels eventually you know going from 55 uh, 550,000 down to down to like 300,000 you know um, yeah, whatever anyway okay that's another story though and many years in the future and i really hope to be around to chat about it and uh, it, you know let's, let's move on okay we're, we're going to the to the uh, pirate chain prices um we're gonna see what kind of what kind of support we can get i think that the rsi is gonna at least come down to this type of level so let's find out okay we are not gonna leave this arrow there and we're gonna move over to the pirate chain price charts that's right fresh colors from a fresh exchange, let's take the USD, USDT price, since that's what we we're looking at BTC and saying, okay, look, we don't have a lot of price data here. We are using the four hour price chart. I've hidden all of the indicators that we tend to use. We use the Bollinger Bands, we use the Ichimoku with a standard crypto uh, uh, settings. If you're curious about that, you know, for anybody who's new, welcome. Thanks for liking the video. Thanks for making your comments. Yeah, thanks for sharing it with anybody that is, matters to you. Just as a as a check here for the uh, inputs of the Ichimoku, if anybody's uh, curious, it's 2060, 120, and 30. Uh, and that is credit to uh, a few other people that I've heard say it. So there you go. Uh, one of them being high altitude investing. Uh, it was back in uh, a few years ago. Okay, so now we are we are in this sideways position finally after on the four hour chart after the decline, and we've made a couple of of low touches here, and now we're trying to hold a higher low here after making a bit of a higher high compared to this previous high, um, and and that's good. That's actually good. Uh, momentum wise, we're looking to to build some positive momentum, but uh, there's a good chance we could be seeing also one of these where it goes down, right? And it goes, dips up and then goes back down. So let's see what happens. Uh, we did make it up. This is a four hour price chart anyway. So, uh, however, we have been quite low on this MACD. So maybe it's time to make our way uh, back into some positive territory on a more, uh, how do you say, on a more, well, longer than just for for a, a few hours, right? A few candles. 
So let's see. Let's try and get. We'll, let's see if we get into that positive momentum territory, okay, and hold it for a bit. That would mean that we would be challenging these highs of 250 and looking for some some three dollar uh, levels. Okay, great. Um, but uh, having said that, again, with that BTC price, uh, it does not really seem does not seem super strong if we look on a daily price level this chart is not is not uh, this could be bottom this could be bottom okay um, but these tweezer like candles seem to be facing the uh, wrong direction if you know what i'm saying right we would want these shadows these wicks to be on the lower end so and this is only the the next significant higher uh, sorry, lower high. This is only the next significant lower high since this kind of uh, cascade over here. So I'm not confident that this is our lowest low. I'm, I, I think with the BTC action, uh, there's a potential for a capitulation at least. Um, and you know what, though, having said that with the RSI at such a low level on daily, I mean, Again, a daily chart, it could last and we could have some, some up movements here, um, even into August, but it could go lower. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying that a daily chart is not as powerful as a weekly and a four hour is not as powerful as a daily, but they all play together. They're all part of the movements overall of the market. Uh, okay, so 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 we're we're in this usdt position and it's really reliant on the bitcoin predict position really so going back then to that bitcoin position and just to reiterate here on a daily price chart there is some some room for um let's go to that daily price chart there there is some room let's look at the momentum indicators there is some room for for negativity okay um but it doesn't feel like it, it needs to be a huge negativity. And there's there's also a lot of room for, for positivity still uh, on a daily. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, that, that negativity, that turnover, it uh, it just, it's everything is just so sideways and down is just the next logical move when everything is so sideways after having been so upwards and now we're down. If everything is still sideways, the next move is down. Okay, all right. So that's our US, that, well, from the BTC considerations, that's the R uh, USDT consideration, meaning we might go down to the $2 level. Okay. Um, we're looking to really use that $2 level as the holding support level. Okay. Really looking to hold there. Now, considering that more likely if we are hitting that two dollar level we will have some sort of maybe even a wick okay and then we can continue and maybe it'll have to double test uh with with some moves but it might not so we'll see uh, but yeah looking for a lower situation um at least at at, at the uh, at the two two range okay it's got to be it's got to show some support. This is a weekend coming up, and we're going to see what the market action brings. Looking at the RBTC price chart, whoa, we got to clean her up. So that was the idea. I was just going to take you through and take this Ichimoku and make it the 20, the, sorry, the 60, the 120. All right. Now, what else we're going to do? This is a four-hour price chart. We're going to also within there. We are going to get rid of the conversion and the baseline, the lagging span. Let's make it into a little bit of a purple color there. And we're going to just soften it up a bit. And the lead will give it a bit more of a green 
and the lagging will give it a bit more of a red. I'll keep it like that. All right, for now. So interestingly, on the four-hour price chart, the price went into that cloud above the the indicator of Ichimoku here within this region, this zone. And now it's playing within it. So that's interesting uh, on the four hour price chart. So let's see uh, more likely as, okay, so let's just hit up this Bollinger Band and just clean you up, sir. Uh, we'll go back to our classic yellow and we'll give you a little dark burps. Burp nerps. And then we go into the, color there all right okay so as you can see here oh, we got this moving average here we we like i like the 200 so let's go into the 200 oops 200 moving average and the style will give it brown color make it a bit thick so we can recognize it okay nowhere to be found perfect we don't have enough data. So yes, you are seeing here, this is an important situation. We want to break through and hold above the 20 period average of the Bollinger Band. So if we are hiding that, the, the yellow line is the 20 day average, uh, sorry, 20 period average, because we're on the four hour chart of the Bollinger Band. So if we can't hold that, then we're definitely uh, looking weak and as though we are gonna come test the lower end which would be around the 62 to 6,500 Satoshi level. So what we really want to make, try and do here is hold this zone for support. And I'm going to just, what I really want to do here is hide all of these. I'm not too concerned about the indicators right now. We're going to talk more of a price idea. So in terms of Satoshis, right? So on the USDT, it could go up and go down. Um, the consideration was that it could go down and in this case in satoshis that might mean that it, it has a, more, a, a a decent likelihood of holding oops this zone here oops. I just hold that right there oops hold that right there okay so this relative zone here is is a zone to hold for support all right you've hit it once and held it the more times it tries to support it, the more the more likely it's to go into it and then below it. But this would be a very nice, strong support level. Okay, and I'm going to show you. Actually, I, I did check before, so I do know that this we're at a 618 level. But if we were to take our Fibonacci retracement tools, okay, and just let's just make this a little bit more convenient for our visual purposes. So this is where we are, Satoshi wise. Okay, we had a nice, a nice move up. Okay, you want to know from the the basic lows here. Uh, okay, fine, a thirty three percent move ish. Okay, so now we're looking at as a retrace, roughly. Okay, down to the six one eight level. Okay, this is a bit generous. Uh, however, no worries. Uh, okay, so in that sense, so. If you notice, this zone is within that 618 level. Uh, and so if we can hold that, that means regardless of whether this is an impulse, continued impulse where we're, we're you know, like a one, two, and then a higher three or higher degrees, whatever. It could be just some form of zigzag, okay? So even, even just some form of zigzag with an A and a B and some sort of C in that, in that general direction there. Um, and that could be nice. However, however, if we can't hold this zone, this region, this 618 level, and, uh, you know, we really, <laughs> then we start looking a lot weaker. And as though it looks like this, this impulsive type of pattern here, or this move from low to high here, uh, has cleared out and its significance has diminished into overall pattern. Uh, and is not in some sort of continuance, okay? So what we're looking for is con this continuation. We would like to see this upward movement as a continuation higher, which means this 618 level here holding, if it can hold over the weekend, then we are definitely looking for some uh, some higher moves. Okay, if we do want to look at lagging indicators, okay, fine. We can start to think that, okay, we can gain more positive momentum and move higher. 
this is only a four hour price chart though. So how significant is it overall? Less than the daily. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look. But we want to hold this level uh, around the 67, 66 hundred Satoshi level. Uh, that's the idea. Okay. Uh, so if we are moving into a different time frame, a higher time frame, then that's really where I got this level. And that, that brings us over here. Okay, so this is a super duper good level to try and hold here. It would be nice if we could get uh, this kind of this kind of pattern I previously showed just now, where we, we get an, an A and a B and a C higher. That would be great. That would be good. Let's try it for that. But if not, that means that we are going to continue down. Uh, then, okay, well, that's what ends up happening. Um, maybe on a daily price chart, that is what ends up happening. But, but if we can get higher first and then move down, okay, remember this is a pirate chain BTC price chart, that would be even better, right? Yeah. Well, just some thoughts here as we sail along. So, I do also want to recognize that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of data on these charts and we're, that gives us the opportunity to really look at the price and the price structure. So either this move, this impulsive move up has been completed and we are going to correct further down, or it's just the beginning of a, a bigger pattern where we can look for a, uh, a next move higher in the coming days. So like, for example, during this next week, we could be looking for that. All right, or two weeks, you know. Uh, however, it seems as though some form of some form of, of sideways action might be uh, might also be in play here. All right. So don't rule that one out either, okay? Which, hey, if we hang around the 7,000 Satoshi level for the rest of the month, yeah, no worries. That's good. That's that's better than, than dropping back into the 6,000s at the low 6,000. And if it means, okay, now that, fine, we're now actually in an A, B, and a C, fine. That's fine too. Let's try and hold this zone here. Otherwise, that's when things get a little more hairy. All right, that's it. I don't have much more to say. I hope these thoughts have given you something to think about for yourself. Definitely what we want to do is think for ourselves. One wants to think for oneself. I wish you the best in thinking for yourself. I'm glad that you're here to listen to my thoughts as they come out. And uh, I hope to read some of your comments in the comment section. Take care of yourselves, be well. I'm glad that I uh, had this opportunity to make this video. It turned out a lot longer than I expected. So hopefully those of you friends of longer videos enjoy uh, this weekend, Friday night, Saturday, early morning tale of intrigue. All right. For now, that's it. Love, peace, happiness. Until next time. Goodbye.